Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything tabletop RPG. Today we are talking about the City of Sigil. One, two, Hey Brian. Hey Will. How you doing today? I am super uh decompressed. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, I feel you there. I feel you there. It's we yeah. can breathe now. Yeah. Let's get back to the show. So we're coming off of our um OGL, OGL recording. D burning episode. Yeah. So you guys heard an episode that we recorded before that last week. Oh yeah. And so yeah, this is happening true. the week Literally after. Sorcery. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you're hearing this like in February, I think. I hope not, because this is the January pick for the patrons, but a lot of shit happened. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's actually the last week of January Woo! it's supposed to air. So Got yeah, in. the OGL thing, it's either that or the first week of February, but thank you patrons on Indeed. Patreon. For hey support. patrons, hey patrons, good pick. Good pick, It was. Good. it's a good one. <laughs> Although I don't actually know anything yeah. about this. I think you'll agree it was a good pick. Uh, so today we are going to a very unique place in the cosmos, uh, plane of existence. I don't think that we've ever talked about on the show. Okay. Uh, specifically, we are going to the central city of this untalked about outer plane, the city of Sigil. Now, the city of Sigil is supposed to technically exist in all settings, or most settings at the very least, but it is primarily related to and used in the Planescape setting. Okay. Uh, Planescape is a setting that deals with all manner of outer entities, be they demon, devil, angel, eugolith, archon, or any other. And the city of Sigil is one of the few, maybe even only places, where all these entities can coexist and fighting each other is strictly forbidden. Oh, so it's like a, a neutral ground. Yes. Um, at least fighting each other on a large scale is, is strictly forbidden. Oh, they can get murder, in some fucking street brawls. Murders happen sometimes. Sometimes murders happen. <laughs> Did you guys know that? <laughs> so this law is enforced by an enigmatic being known simply as the Lady of Pain. Oh, we've definitely talked about her. Yes. This, is, this all makes for a very unique and exciting place to set your campaign up in. So let's get into it. Okay. I would like to get into the city of Sigil and fight a god. She's, she's not a god. There's actually a really big thing about that. Well, there's other gods there, right? Nope, 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 nope. Oh. Wait, no, gods are not wait. allowed here. We're going to get there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, outer entities, but not gods. I see. Yes. I immediately assumed no, like, no, godliness. It, it, All right. You're, you're, you're going to find out. So Sigil, also known as the Cage, mm. the City of Doors, and the City of Secrets. The Thunderdome. <laughs> is a floating city in the center of the Outlands and the self-proclaimed center of the multiverse. Ooh, wow. A major hub for interplanar travel, the city contains multiple, por- mul- yeah, multiple portals to every single plane, as well as uh, to numerous locations in the prime material plane. Mm-hmm. We will talk about the Outlands momentarily, but for now, let's just consider it as the outer plane of true neutra- neutrality. Wow, what a tagline, like that Welcome to Vegas sign. Like, welcome to the center of the multiverse, everybody. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a it's hard to beat. Tag, yeah. You can't beat that. Um, so it, that's not exactly correct about it being the outer plane of true neutrality, but it's correct enough mm. for us to move forward. Okay. So located in the Outlands, Sigil hovers above the immensely tall landmark known as the Spire that stands at the plane center from anywhere on the infinite plane it is possible to see sigil hovering atop the spire as the mountaintop reaches up into the endless nothingness above jesus sigil is shaped like the inside of a torus which is a fancy way of saying it's shaped like a donut (laughs) (laughs) like a like a classic homer simpson donut with a hole in the oh yeah absolutely not like a maple bar yeah, no, not like a maple. Not pie. like an apple fritter. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, dude, I love apple fritters. I do Can too. We just talk the, about that for a moment. The immense amount of grease you get out of an apple fritter is disturbing. <sighs> I though. love me an apple fritter. Okay. Crispy edges. But no, sigil is shaped like your classic Homer Simpson donut. Yeah. Um. Uh, I will continue with the description as soon as I find my place. The city is on the interior of this torus or donut. The city's measurements have been taken time and again, but despite these attempts at measurement, the city does not have a fixed size. Its dimensions ever change as the nonstop construction of new buildings continues and as the will of as the will of the Lady of Pain dictates. Sounds a lot like the Dark Tower, not the book series. The I mean, actual that tower too, in the actual series. structure of the Dark Tower. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how close that. we get. I'll let you know how yeah, close we okay. get after we continue. The city does not fill the entire inner surface of the Taurus donut, but just <laughs> the outer portion of the ring. Hold up. is A Taurus is the actual name of the shape, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> but donut's better. Yeah I, yeah. I would eat a donut over just some random Taurus. 
<laughs> never eat a random Taurus. Never eat a random Taurus. It never goes well. It's actually like if you want to talk to Ash and see if he's eating a random Taurus, <laughs> oh, he's got a lot of them. Thus, the city is recursive only in one direction along its major circumference. Even though it is not a completely closed service, it is impossible to see outside of the ring from any point within the city. If one looked up, you would see the portion of the city on the far side of the ring. Um, the edges of the ring are lined with st solid buildings that have no windows uh, outside. So the only way to try and see what lay beyond the edge, what, what lays beyond the edge, is to climb a rooftop. Those who do so report that there is nothing to see beyond the edge, uh, not empty space or vacuum, but nothing at all. Oh, weird. Yeah, okay, weird indeed. It's not that episode of Futurama where they go to the edge of the universe and there's like that other dimension fry and they like touch they're doing the same shit that sounds vaguely familiar yeah no it's not like that your almost pretty good show it's a great show yeah those who jump over the edge disappear and reappear into a random plane of existence, oh <laughs> which all things considered your your odds are not good most no. most planes of existences you don't want to be in yeah this is mario um, 64 style just like transporting you places right great. so as a result of this unique geometry sigil has no sky the city is kept lit by an intrinsic luminescence of the air itself which waxes and wanes creating a semblance of a 24-hour day-night cycle. The brightest moment in the cycle is referred to as peak, and the darkest point is referred to as anti-peak. Uh, time is measured by counting down the hours between peak, BP, and incrementing them after peak, AP, AP. As a result, most of the time, the city is illuminated only by a hazy twilight. Clocks and sigil are not numbered, and so they are marked with a 24 one-hour, marked with 24 one-hour segments, with daytime hours, and peak on top, and night hours and anti-peak at the bottom. Okay, I think I get what's going on here. I, I think it's pretty cool that, like, it's ambient light everywhere, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, That's actually a few planes of existences are like that. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to imagine. It's kind of like just nighttime in the city, I guess, huh? Like, where... I know there's lamps, like street lights and stuff, but like yeah. seeing that glow over them, is, yeah. like that sort of get, brings what I'm picturing here. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know why. I was thinking it's kind of like uh, lighting on TV viewed like as the viewer. You don't really see where the light source is. There just kind of is light everywhere. Obviously, in studio, there's all these different lights. Yeah, and yeah. you set up your lights to so you don't create shadows, unlike here. We're working on it. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, on TV, exactly. They there There are no shadows on TV. Yeah, and that's so. disturbing in its own way. Uh, yeah, if you think about it too much. If, but yes. really, it looks like, okay, you know, you don't really think about it. So it's doing its job. Indeed. The city is crowded with buildings that squeeze over each other with very small living spaces. Uh, new buildings, courtyards, and streets are constantly being built, changing the city's landscape and turning old structures into underground crypts. Sigil's architecture is marked by its iron spikes and bladed fences, serving both as protection against intruders and as a stylistic choice. Stone gargoyles are also typical decorations. Now, um, you've never played Bloodborne, have you? Mm -mm. I've been playing a lot of Bloodborne uh, lately. And for those listeners who, who have played Bloodborne, I have to say, uh, and maybe they agree with me, this description of like the stylistic look of the city definitely sounds like the city of Yarnum, which is like the city that you're in throughout the whole game, which is like this gothic Victorian kind of like gargoyles and bladed fences and all this other stuff. It's pretty interesting. Neat. Okay. I mean, I want to play more video games. It's something I want to do in 2023. So Bloodborne's like, brutal, dude. It's brutal as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to go the PlayStation route here. I love my Switch and Get everything. Get Elden Ring. I know. Um, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we should live stream it for, for our fans. I hope okay. we can. Yeah. So weather on Sigil alternates between foul-smelling smog, frequently chilly rains. Uh, where does rain come from is a note that I wrote. Um, <laughs> and somewhat clear weather. The haze from the city's myriad of chimneys is nearly constant, often reducing visibility to about 10 yards. Or 9.1 meters. Or even down to 5 feet. That's 1.5 meters. In the worst cases. When it rains, it is common for the water to mix with the walls and the air's impurities and turn into a brown drizzle. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I do a, not want to read the words brown drizzle again. It's definitely a chocolate donut. Ugh. After it rains, the city air clears out for a while with light breezes and a pleasant, cool temperature. The city's location and geometry is considered by most sages to be impossible. 
and not just because it's a floating, ever-fluctuating in size donut with nasty weather. Another fact of impossibility is the fact that although all magic is completely impeded at the center of the Outlands, uh, it works normally within the city of Sigil, with the exceptions of spells that involve pl- uh, planar travel. Okay. There are many hypotheses that attempt to explain Sigil's location and existence, although they vary wildly. The most popular explanation is that the Lady of Pain is responsible for the city's existence and properties. All right. Okay. Thank okay, let's lady. talk about the Outlands. All right. The concordant domain of the Outlands is the center of the Great Wheel of Outer Planes. It connects to all other Outer Planes and is truly neutral in alignment. Other names for this plane are the Outlands, God's Land, and Friendly Opposition. Okay, so the Outer Planes traditionally are not the... Are they the Elemental Planes or are they the ones beyond that? Beyond that. Okay. Yeah, the, the Elemental Planes are the Inner Planes. Right, so it's Material Plane, Elemental Planes, it's, the it's Celestial mater- it's and... Material Plane, Feywild, Shadowfell. Right. Elemental okay. Planes, and then the Outer Planes. Okay, so like Celestia... Yep. Uh, the Nine Hells, those are Outer Planes. Yep, okay. that's exactly right. Cool. Uh, the Outer... The Outlands is the exception to many of the rules that govern the Outer Planes. The first being its lack of alignment or true neutrality. It is an infinite plane, yet it has a definite center, the spire with sigil atop. The properties of all the Outer Planes are mixed together in the Outlands. Good, evil, law, and chaos exist here in all their forms, but they are less able to affect each other due to the neutralizing effect of this plane. Okay. This plane defies description by changing the perception of those who enter, becoming a completely new and yet familiar plane with each visit. Typically, on the first visit, uh, the plane appears as a larger version of the visitor's homeland. Subsequent visits reveal a different face. That's so... This is so fucking crazy. Yeah, it's what? pretty crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Outlands has a neutralizing effect on the randomness of weapons and spells, reducing all healing and damage to the minimum possible. That yeah. is an interesting side effect. For yeah. Sure. So, like, uh, if you are a fighter with a sixteen strength and a long sword, your one d eight plus three damage just becomes four damage flat. In in Dungeons and Dragons. In Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're it's gonna take us a while to like kind of we're gonna slowly move yeah. away from like the fixation of of that. I yeah. Think. Yeah. That's true. It's um, gonna take time. <laughs> in addition to this. Magic itself is gradually neutralized as you approach the center of the plane. At about a thousand miles, let me do the math 1600 kilometers uh, out, high level spells cease to function. Uh, every 100 miles, this one's easy, that's 160 kilometers or so, lower level spells begin to fail until finally at 200 miles, 320 kilometers from the center, even first level spells will not function. This applies to divine magic and the powers of any gods as well. Therefore, this ring around the plane. A ring around the center of the plane has become a meeting place, uh, bizarre and common ground used by every intelligent species of the outer planes, including greater deities of differing alignments. So that that is a thing. Greater okay. deities can exist in the outlands, but they cannot exist in sigil. Okay, so but is it them or their avatar? Uh, it's the outer plane, so it could be either or. Okay, yeah. Uh, moving in closer to the center at about a hundred miles. Uh, that's 160 kilometers. <laughs> All chemical reactions cease to function, and even the gods cannot get any closer to the center of the plane. You think I should say kilometers? <laughs> um, no, I think kilometers is standard. Okay, that's fine. The, the Outlands connects to all other outer planes via portals. Around the outer edge of the plane are 16 evenly spaced settlements that are each constructed around a portal to one particular outer plane. For that reason, each gate town shares many char- characteristics of the plane to which it is connected. I enjoy the evenness of that statement. The 16 evenly spaced settlements. Like, uh, it's pleasing. It's pleasing yeah, to think everything about. Everything is perfectly balanced here in the Outlands. All things should be. <laughs> the 16 gate towns are as follows. Ex- Excelsior. Excelsior. A beautiful, well-defended city with a kind population. It connects to Mount Celestia. Oh, cool. Do you want to do all the city names? Uh, I want to hear you say it first, and I'm just going to echo you. Okay, Trade Gate. Trade Gate. Uh, why did I want to say Trotagade? <laughs> That's why. Welcome to Trotagade. I'll do the next one. <laughs> a star-shaped city that bristles with commerce and constant activity. It connects to Bytopia via a complex trade system. Sorry, what's Bytopia? Is Bi- that like Zootopia? But like it's one of the upper planes. Okay, we haven't talked about it on the show. I'm sure we will one day. All right, that's B Y T O P I A. Yeah. Uh, ecstasy, a peaceful pastoral town. It connects to Elysium. I remember Elysium. 
Uh, Faunel. A ruined city, but bristling with life. It connects to the Beastlands. Sylvania. A constantly partying town where music plays day and night and is connected to Arborea. Glorium. A fishing village built at the edge of a fjord. It connects to Isgard via two different portals. Zaus? That's a great one. So um, I is think it should be Chaos, like Chaos. Chaus, okay, sure. Chaos, not like Chaos, but Chaus. <laughs> Um, it's either Chaus or Kaus. I, it's also known as Axos, Skeo, and yeah. Osk. They and all other permutations the of letters. the word. Yeah. yeah. It is an ever changing city that connects to limbo. Bedlam. A, a fan shaped town built haplessly on the slopes of a hill. It connects to Pandemonium. Plague Mort. A diseased, ruined, and decaying town. It connects to the abyss. Cursed. That's C U R S T. A bleak, dusty city organized in rings that connects to Karsiri. Hopeless. A large city with a single entrance organized as a spiral. It connects to Hades. Connects to Hades. Okay, yeah. let's call it hopeless. Torch. Built on the slopes of a range of volcanoes and surrounded by a disease-ridden marsh, it connects to Gehenna. Rib cage. A mid-sized settlement, beautiful but oppressive. Located at the <laughs> bottom of the of the Vale of the Spine. Oh, God. It okay. connects to the Nine Hells. Ah, I see. <laughs> I see now. <laughs> of course, this is the Nine Hells. Rib cage, a mid-sized settlement. Beautiful. but Okay, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. keeping all your organs in check. Uh, Regus. I think it's Regus, but you might be right. Yeah. A huge military encampment. It connects to Acheron. Automata. A perfectly ordered city. It, co it connects to Mechanus. Of course. Fortitude. A mid-sized, well-ordered city with an oppression, oppressive population eager to enforce the law. It connects to Arcadia. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. I love stuff named like this. Uh, and oh, I really? I, w I would never have known. I know. Will's <laughs> playing in my new campaign where I named nine cities in this way. Very much. Um, and I didn't realize how pivotal those nine cities truly are to my campaign and it really put me in a bad spot writing wise oh, like no. oh shit i should have wrote this part first <laughs> mm, i feel you i feel you we ready to get back to sigil yeah all right oh that's super quest omega by the way which is, oh yeah we're currently figuring out what to do about that show we're figuring it out but it's gonna be fun yeah so it is impossible to walk into or out of Sigil from the Outlands or any other location, quite frankly. It is also impossible to enter or exit the city or even observe it via spell, magic item, or any creature's innate abilities. Although spells like Plane Shift, Gate, and Astral Projection are incapable of entering or exiting Sigil, the city is not completely cut off from the Astral Plane, so spells such as Raise Dead, which requires access to the Astral, still work. Uh, teleportation within the boundaries of the city also functions normally. Yeah. Okay. The only way in or out of Sigil is via its innumerable portals. Any bounded opening, a doorway, an arch, a barrel hoop, or picture frame in Sigil can possibly be a portal to another plane of existence or to another point in Sigil itself. In addition, portals can be permanent or temporary, linking to fixed or shifting locations. Okay, cool. So I'm not positive, but I think... It just changes constantly. So every time you go through a doorway, there is at least a very small percentage chance that it could be a portal without you knowing. Ha, oh, fuck. I think. <laughs> I just had to go, to, go the to the bathroom. <laughs> That's hilarious. The ruler of Sigil. No, guys, for real, I need a shit. <laughs> That's horrible. Please. The ruler of Sigil is the mysterious Lady of Pain, who reigns from her seat of power known as the Throne of Blades. Her power controls all the portals in the city and prevents all deities and archfiends from entering it. The Lady does not otherwise concern herself with ruling the city directly. She typically only interferes when something threatens the stability, stability of Sigil itself or crosses one of her few but unforgiving edicts, which amount to two things. Keep the peace and refrain from worshipping her. Refrain from worshipping her? Do not okay. worship the Lady of Pain. <laughs> the lady is an entity of inscrutable motives, but she is known for being swift and merciless when dealing with threats to her city, to her and to the city of Sigil. Those who cross her, even accidentally, risk being flayed to death or teleported to extra-dimensional labyrinths <laughs> known as the Lady's Mazes, never to be seen again. Tales also exist of would-be your supers to the Throne of Blades who end up imprisoned in Agathion, the third layer of Pandemonium. It's been a long time since we talked about the Lady of Pain. I remember this controversy with her. But, like, the details are kind of... It's nice to get a refresher, is oh, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Not much is known about the Lady of Pain. Part of why this is is because few in the city ever see her. And those who have never speak to her out of fear. And she never speaks to anybody. 
Um, there is never any doubt she is real, though, because she has been spotted hovering over the streets of Sigil on many occasions. Yikes. Uh, any who have tried to interact with her at such times found their skin erupting in bloody wounds when she gazed upon them. Oh, my God. Many others who have seen her uh, vanished, teleported into the prisons of the Hive, so it is not considered a good sign if she is heard to be about in the streets. Yeah, if you hear the Lady of Pain is coming down the street, you go, go hide. Go hide. <laughs> go chill. She's yeah. got fucking Sharon She's gone. doing She's, stuff. She'll put you through 24 hours of torture in a second. Indeed. Uh, those who have seen her and live to tell the tale of it describe her as being ensconed in sparkling blades. She's often depicted as a floating, legless, robe entity, robed entity wearing a feminine mask with dozens of blades protruding from it in all directions. Can you imagine being in the street? Look at her up there. Fucking legless. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Well, she doesn't have legs. I don't want to tell you. She just doesn't got them. She doesn't got them. Lady Pain is not a deity, even if she is this powerful one, for she has no temples and no worshippers, and yet she still exists, which is something a god cannot do. Yeah, like because uh, gods are powered by uh, in this set in D and D by worship, yeah. by like specifically prayer. Forgotten Realms and many other settings. But yeah, right. Yeah, so she's like the negative and en- energy. She's like the void. Like the the opposing power, in a way, it, it's honestly. I'm she, just reaching she's to justify. Very it. mysterious. Yeah, what she is. Um, in fact, she refuses worship. Those who try to worship her are found with their skin flayed off. <laughs> so she's very opposed to it. And I have a feeling it's because if enough people were to worship her, she would become a god, which in a lot of ways would actually diminish her power. Oh shit! Um, okay, but more yeah. about that after the short rest. Let's take a short rest. Return. Indeed, we have. We're fucking back. Indeed, we are. And while this show changes as needs <laughs> mandate, we do not. We we are back. <laughs> Indeed, we, we are. remain back. Uh, you can support us at patreon.com slash the dungeon cast where things are in flux, but we're figuring it out. And as soon as we know you you guys on Patreon and in our Discord have already seen the the polls we're putting out, um, you know, things like that. We're getting your opinion on on how to move forward. I know there's a lot of you out there that are like, hey, stay the course. It's going to be okay. It's not. They they crossed the line uh, with us, and we're not going to just sit here and take it. Um, so uh, that that's the thing. We're I, I don't really want to talk about it too much moving forward, but it, need, it needs to be addressed just in case people are jumping. They skip that episode. They're jumping on. They're like, okay, what's up? Like, they changed the... They changed the intro, like, right. what's going on? We're still going to, like, we're talking about D&D stuff right now, you know? Yep, indeed. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for your support. Thank you for watching the show. Thank you for leaving. Uh, I saw a, uh, a handful of you guys come in with iTunes reviews after, like, a little bit. Not I don't, It was kind of a dry spell, I guess. They were trickling in, but, like, a, a bulk of them finally came in. Thank you guys. That, that yeah, meant a lot. Thank you. Um, it keeps our show. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's directly tied to where our show ranks in like Apple Podcasts. Yeah, I think so. Um, because um, as soon as that bulk came in, we were like back up. It's like we're a top ten podcast in the gaming category. Um, and it's all thanks to you guys. <laughs> and it has a lot to do with with those reviews. Like when we weren't getting them, the the number the the ranking was dropping. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, for sure. Yeah, and nah, that, I guess we're only a top twenty. Yeah, <laughs> and that keeps us in like word of mouth for people you know you go you go and we get suggested to people that listen to like podcasts so uh it, it's basically a way to yeah, we really appreciate reading the kind words you say of course uh, that fuels me but um uh it helps other people learn about the show and, and that's really important to us so so thank you guys so much um leaving the subscribes on youtube we crossed 45k subscribers on there and as that not being our main platform uh, it's a big deal to us for sure um, hitting the like button, all that stuff is really, really great. I saw some people go from the podcast side to the YouTube side. I'm like, hey, I actually love seeing your guys' faces. It's really good. And, Will, you are very handsome, so I understand. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I understand I it. So are you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you guys can check us out on YouTube if you're listening. That's totally fine. We are demonetized there still. We're working on that. Yeah. We've been working on it for like nine to be months, fair, though. demonetized isn't the right word. Google Adsense fucking hates us. I think it's more... Appropriate. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm YouTube's gonna, I'm gonna actually go. cool with us. Yeah, it's YouTube's Google fine with Adsense. us. Google AdSense, which is the company that like lets 
the money flow. Yeah, I guess they're um, the spice of Dune. They're they the let spi- the money flow. <laughs> they don't hate us. They are ambivalent about us. I think. Yeah, in a way they, that is yeah. like that is very unhelpful as we're trying to fix whatever the hell went wrong. I know. Yeah, it's it. It's been almost a year, and it's been frustrating. Yeah, and we're we're working hard on that, but it's still it's still very cool. Like we we I still read all the YouTube comments. Absolutely, yeah. it's it's our actually our main feedback outlet because it's such YouTube so comments. immediate. Yeah, so immediate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it it helps a lot. We appreciate all that stuff, you guys. Thank you so much for continuing to support the show. Uh, you know, the money is cool. It doesn't matter though. There's lots of free stuff you can do to help us out. Yeah, uh, and telling a friend is is. Very crucial. Word of mouth is always great. Um, let's get back to the pain. <laughs> all right, let's do it. So although the Lady of Pain does not act directly in the everyday management of Sigil, her will is enforced through a number of servants uh, known as Dabus or Dabus? Dabus. Or Dabus. Dabus. <laughs> um, so who, who simultaneously serve as ladies' eyes and ears as well as the keepers of the structure of Sigil. So like the Lady, lady the Dabus or Dabus, do not interact with this, with Sigil's inhabitants or travelers. It is considered wise to leave the Dabus be, since antagonizing them incurs the risk of bringing down the wrath of their mistress. I like uh, I like the Dabus. That's uh-huh. that's a good one. But yeah. I think if we're gonna say Dabus, leave the the off of there. So that sentence could be like, like the lady, the bus do not interact with Sigil's inhabitants or travelers. I'm, I'm not going to go with the bus. I like the Daboos. So, oh, here so, it is. Daboos. So Daboos. Uh, Daboos or Daboos appear as humanoids with white hair, go like horns, and yellow tan skin. They float inches above the ground, their feet never touching the earth. They speak only through visual symbols that materialize and fill the air above their heads. Wow, I hate this. <laughs> I think they're so cool. Yeah, they're creepy. That's creepy. They are yeah. creepy. It, it, in a cool way. Yeah. I'm not like hating on it. And yeah. like, I'm just weirded out. The Daboos also con- constantly repair and reshape Sigil, recycling materials from one structure to build another. They are believed to be the only ones who truly understand the inner workings of the city. And some even speculate that the Daboos tr- are the true rulers of Sigil. It's believed that the Daboos dwell somewhere in the crypts in the cities underground. Oh my gosh. These are. This place is horrifying. Yeah, this place is is it reminds me of Bloodborne, bro. It, it reminds me of Dis. Uh, a little bit of Dis, yes, a little bit of Dis as well. Uh, thanks to the Lady's strict forbiddance of open, large scale conflict, Sigil is a true neutral haven to all visitors. It is a location where no wars are waged, and even the fiercest opponents, such as an angel and a fiend or a devil and a demon, can be seen sharing a drink and momentarily setting the differences aside. All right. I guess neutrality has like its big energy in D and D, and like this kind of rings yeah. out. Yeah, absolutely. So, nevertheless, Sigil is hardly peaceful. The Lady Payne does not concern herself with day-to-day crimes such as murder or petty theft. Only threats to Sigil, and by extension to the Lady herself, are met with direct action by her and the Daboos. Uh, this lack of direct oversight and the need for personal maintenance of law and order gives visitors and natives a feeling that Sigil is constantly on the brink of anch- anarchy. Yeah, I mean... Because someone's in charge. Yeah. But also, someone is definitely in charge. Absolutely. They just have like really specific rules. Yeah. <laughs> Sigil is a prime destination for travelers as well as a center of trade throughout the multiverse. Its merchants accept the standard currency from anywhere on the plains. Most shops and stalls tend to concentrate on the Great ba- Bazaar in the Market Ward, but there are numerous street markets throughout the city that operate part time. Day markets trade mostly in food and housewares, whereas night markets offer a larger variety. I love night markets like yeah. in the real world. They're super cool. Those are awesome. Yeah. The city does not produce any usable natural resources and has to import even the most basic items such as food and raw materials. In order to survive, the city capitalizes on its most important asset, the sheer amount of portal, portals and the fact that it is one of the most frequent stops for plane walkers going anywhere in the multiverse. Okay. So it's like the ultimate airport stopover location. I Yeah, I know. <laughs> like you're going to have so many so much diversity yeah. like rolling through. Wow, what a what a job for a DM to kind of describe this place. Yeah, yeah. I I have entertained the idea of doing City of Sigil games, but I never have. Oh, like purely Sigil? Like, like you a campaign show up set here? in the city, Ooh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, so what's cool you'd be is... You'd jumping off a lot to go to different places. Exactly. Then, huh? that's, yeah. a fun, that's a fun thing about Sigil. And Sigil is like the center of Planescape lore. I feel like if you're running a Planescape game, you're almost definitely in, in Sigil for a big portion of it. Cool. Um, for that reason, the first priority in Sigil is to accommodate its visitors' various tastes during their stay. There is an as- enormous assortment of inns and taverns that cater for just about anyone. Such planes are usually highly specialized, and each tends to evoke the atmosphere of a single location. 
Yeah. With, wow. How how colorful. I mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. With the large flux of travelers often looking to trade their wares, Sigil is famous for being the place where anything can be found for sale. Goods from several worlds in the prime material plane, such as bronze wood from our Earth or fire wine from Toril, are available there, as well as exotic items from all other planes. So it is common for travelers to look for those goods in Sigil first before venturing to their proper places of origin. The city also offers a vast array of services supporting traders, travelers, and residents alike. Uh, Many people offer their services as bodyguards, mercenaries, and bill collectors. This is cool. I mean, like, from game to game, you don't have to have all of this ready as a a GM all the time. But to have, like, oh, today I will introduce this wine from this particular place as, like, hey, did you guys hear that wine came in from blah, blah, blah? Yeah. like, uh, Like, that's... That's what's cool about this is like you get to pick up on those little rumors and like that little bit of flavor. You know, having one or two of those a game, three of those a game, that's adds a lot. That'll put a lot down when you you know something like this can make you feel really overwhelmed planning a game. Of you course, know? Like, yeah. Oh, I need everything. You don't. You don't. You only need a little bit here and you there. You only need what you need when yeah. you need it. Yeah. Many wizards also set up shop in the city, taking advantage of the variety of items that pass through. Sigil is famous for its magic item production, as items created within the cage are considerably more resistant to planar effects that weaken magical enchantments. However, prices are considerably higher for such items, and their sellers often only keep small businesses that can be difficult to track down. Makes sense. Excuse me. It is highly recommended that planeswalkers new to Sigil employ a guide, lest they be taken advantage of or mugged. Since there is no central agency or any regulation of the profession, though, such guides can be little better themselves, either serving to persuade a traveler to the side of their faction or simply robbing their customer once the ba- their backs are turned. Yeah, there's so, a, it's probably a ton of car artists walking around yeah, It's here. a dangerous place. Right. Sigil has no horses, so unlike Waterdeep's drays and higher coaches, its transportation system consists of set-in chairs that can hold up to two people each. The service does not extend to the entire city, though, as some dangerous areas are to be are avoided by set-in chair pullers. Uh, also, being a courier in Sigil is a dangerous job, so the service is not entirely reliable. So you probably have some around. I wonder if the couriers here are, like, very strong, you know, they, or they, wily. I can see that. I can yeah. see that, yeah, for sure. Before an event... Uh, called the Faction War, Sigil was home to 15 extra planar factions that struggled with one another for power and prestige, but generally did not engage in open count- conflict. The Lady of Pain tolerated the existence of these factions so long as they did not interfere with her or her nebulous goals. Okay. Several factions even served useful purposes, such as the Governors, the Harmonium, and the Mercy Killers, which served as judges, jury, and executioners of Sigil, respectively. Is Governors spelled that way on purpose? Yes, it is. G-U-V-N-E-R-S. Governors. I love Governors, damn it! Indeed. <laughs> How did that get through? <laughs> it was a choice. Quality? No, 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 not. I just mean like us doing the Hello Governor joke. Sorry, okay. slipped through the cracks. Yeah, I knew it was coming. <laughs> uh, following the faction war, other organizations took over administrative roles in the city. An advisory council was formed uh, by prominent citizens to keep the peace, offering often hiring adventurers to deal with threats. So Sigil is divided into six wards. Although the boundary between wards is not clearly marked on the city's streets or maps, it's usually easy to identify a ward based on the general upkeep and packing of the buildings as well as the type of business conducted there. The wards are as follows. The Ladies' Ward, the richest and most exclusive section of the city, home to the elites of society and of its government. Cool. Mar- Market Ward, the main location for pur- purchasing goods and services. It is famous for offering items from numerous planes and worlds. Guild Hall Ward, usually counted as part of Market Ward, home to the traders, craftsmen, artisans, guild members, and other members of the middle class. Clerks Ward, an affluent district, home to most of the city's lower rung bureaucrats and middlemen. Hive Ward, the slum and the ghetto, home to the poor, the rogues, and the unwanted dregs of the city. Interesting. Lower Ward, an industrial district clogged with the smoke from the foundries and from the portals of the lower plains. I like how you did Lower Ward. I like how you did that. (laughs) That's it was, cool. It's not intentional, but thank you. Now you read the whole page, and you're like, a deep, you're one of your deeper voices. I nice. just, I'm running, I'm running out of breath. That's what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> so Sigil has a population of about fifty thousand permanent residents, with a much higher number of temporary residents and visitors that result in as many as two hundred fifty thousand people found in the city at any given time. Now I find these numbers kind of interesting because in our in our area. Like the city I live in, which is a very small city for Southern California, mm-hmm. um, there's three hundred thousand people there. Yeah, and that's just that's just that one town. 
You I know. know. Like, think about like a place like New York, right? Like, yeah, millions like, and millions. Right? Just all packed in, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. or like even a even a whole country, like a European country, you know, uh, like Spain or something like that, like, or or like the city of of Rome, you know, mm-hmm. just like everything's so packed tight. And again, millions of 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 po- of populace. So. Right. Yeah. This is kind of that's <clears throat> seems sparse, right? Yeah. But. but but at the same time, these are probably common numbers for like a medieval society's major cities. Uh, yeah, I think I think so, and it, it doesn't give you as much to manage as a a DMGM either. Like with numbers like that, I guess not. It, yeah. not I I don't know. At, at a certain point, it just doesn't matter anymore. I feel like. Yeah, I think so. I definitely think so. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, hell, we did Super Quest Saga, and like there was cities of millions that it didn't matter. So, right, because you know. it's so vast. You're, you're going to yeah. explore what you're going to explore, and the people that are there are going to be there. Exactly. You can't, there's no way you can ever interact with this many. Yeah, you can't interact interact with. Don't billions. they say like the average person can like know roughly like seventy people or so well, like and maintain a relationship with like seventy ish people. people, and that's like you're maxing out really yeah. hard. I'm like, yeah. dude, seventy people. I got like five fools. <laughs> And like my family, you yeah, know? right. Yeah. <laughs> I got two dudes in my family. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Absolutely. Um, and you're one. You're one of them. <laughs> and, uh, one of them I do a show with. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so uh, the population includes uh, members of virtually every species found in the multiverse. Longtime natives have a tendency to feel uncomfortable in open spaces or locations where they can see a sky and the horizon, as they are accustomed to the absence of those features in sigil. I see. Okay. The population of Sigil speaks in a characteristic slang known as the cant that often confuses newcomers. They tend to hold inhabitants of the material plane in contempt, referring to them as clueless, outsiders, and more politely, primes. Ah, that's funny. Yeah. I, I, got, I find that less polite, calling someone a prime instead of an outsider. Cl- but and clueless or and an clueless, outsider. Yeah. yeah. But whatever. Despite this, cagers and planers in general hold a cautious respect for primes. Uh, since they acknowledge that a certain amount of power is necessary to reach Sigil from the material plane. Is that like, primey? This is your first plane jump or what? <laughs> right. But as they recognize that, like, if you're from the material plane and you're here, you got to be at least level 12, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Level 12 is now level zero in the city of Sigil. Yeah, there you go. So and when everyone is level 12, everyone's also level one. Yep. You heard it here. Yep. The city of Sigil. I did math good just now. (laughs) Thank you. The city of Sigil does not have a lustrous vegetation, and its only park has been overrun by squatters. The only remaining plant life is razor vine, a rapidly growing plant that originated in the lower plains, and is considered a hazard. Uh, The darker alleys are crowded with rats and cranium rats. Rock grubs grow on garbage heaps, and bats nest in the higher places. The city's underground is inhabited by (laughs) were-rats. Cool. The city also has two native species of birds, pigeons, with a gra- <laughs> Of course. <laughs> They're fucking everywhere. I can't stop. Can't stop seeing these pigs. Wasn't it you who told me you hate pigeons? Or you just hate birds? Uh, I think Brian birds- hates birds. Yo, okay, chill. <laughs> okay, like, sorry. Look, I like the birds that are cool, but most <laughs> birds aren't cool, okay? They're assholes. They're dirty, <laughs> and they can... They fly, and that present. I'm jealous of that, first of all, and second of all, when you're up there and you don't care about anything below you, you shit on it, literally. You're not wrong. Oh, my gosh. I saw a terrible... It's a terrible thing to do. Don't ever do this. I'm not condoning this, but I saw a video where they fed a bunch of seagulls, at the, and seagulls are my least favorite, one of my least favorite birds, worse than pigeons, for sure, but... um they fed a bunch of seagulls at the beach laxative laced like food. Oh my god. And they god. recorded the aftermath and the fucking cops came. There was shit everywhere. People were just like on <laughs> skateboards and stuff like, oh my God. <laughs> what the hell? I was so bad. Uh, uh. but that's what's possible with birds. <laughs> All right. Back to D back to tabletop RPGs. Yes. Very good. Nice save. <laughs> The city, oh yeah, pigeons, with a gray-green coloration <laughs> and large ravens with gray bodies and black heads and wings, known as executioner's ravens. That's pretty cool. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, like if you have a bird as a pet, like I'm not trying to like <laughs> ruin your day or whatever. I'm sorry. We can move on from the birds. Though, okay. Right? Are you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> Sigil's origins are unknown and clouded in mystery and legend. Some speculate that the city was built by the Lady of Pain herself, while others maintain that Sigil was built by the Dabus. Um, They are believed to be the city's first inhabitants since there is no record of a time where they were not present in the city. 
This hypothesis is also favored by the unique level of care the Dabus demonstrate towards Sigil, constantly repairing it and silently watching over it. Yeah, now that we're here, Dabus, I think, is right. It's like Lord Jabu Jabu, kind of. Yeah, there it's we go. It's got that feel when you read it, like, same syllables, same mm -hmm. letters, mm -hmm. number of letters. In its distant past, the city was administered by guilds with over 50 warring factions wrestling with each other for power and control. In an event known as the Great Upheaval, the Lady of Pain limited the number of official factions to 15, handing control of the city to the factions instead of the guilds. This new arrangement lasted for six centuries, during the period in which control of sigil was in the hands of factions. The years were measured from the beginning of the rule of certain factions' leaders. Excuse me. 632 years later, after the Great Upheaval, in the 130th year of Factol Hashkar's rule, the simmering <laughs> political tensions between the 15 factions for supremacy of their worldview escalated to open hostilities, triggering a bloody internal conflict known as a faction war. The war ended with the complete disbanding of all factions by the Lady of Pain, with some of them being extinguished, uh, others moving to headquarters to other their headquarters to other planes, and others becoming underground organizations. Okay. Um, sometime after the faction war, the Lich Vecna attempted to ascend to the status of greater deity and orchestrated an invasion of Sigil wh from where he hoped to control the entire multiverse. And uh, he almost succeeded. That's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a module from second edition, I think, called Die Vecna Die. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love the name of that. <laughs> it's a good one, yeah. The Lady of Pain was able to expel Vecna from the city with the help of adventurers. But the invasion caused a great dis disturbance in the multiverse. Following his defeat, the Lady of Pain strengthened Sigil's defenses and reorganized the planar structure in order to repair the damage and to prevent such an event from ha ever happening again. Wow. That's crazy stuff, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, fucking, fucking Vecna. Yeah, you didn't expect what, him, did you? What an asshole. You never expect Vecna. He always strikes when you're not expecting it. It's almost like he keeps his secrets. Yeah. Any questions about Sigil? That's that's all I got. It's a lot to, like, you know, process and try to get a question out of here. I did have some questions about this recent thing we read. Why 630? Are there any, is there anything to these numbers? Are they arbitrary? Like the I think they're arbitrary. Yeah. yeah. It kind of seems that way. Yeah. Sometimes a lot of D and D lore has non arbitrary numbers as like pivotal numbers for stuff. And then, yeah, but it makes sense. For, not everything can be like that. Right. So. Yeah. Not everything has meaning necessarily. Yeah. It's not a thousand and one in hell. Everything has meaning. I oh guess. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Talking a lot about hell. A thousand and one days. This is um, like the space between. This is just the space between all the stuff, right? The wicked lies we tell. <laughs> Sorry. Can we but call yeah. it a game? <laughs> I guess so. We'll call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. Oh, wait. wait long rest. Long rest. We're going to go. We forgot about it. We do that. Do we do that anymore? That's a D&D &D thing. Yeah, but we did a short rest. Let's take a long rest. Okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, went with a long rest. As part of the show where we we might change the name of it, of it I guess. <laughs> I don't think we're going to. I'm no, it's, just, fine. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we don't have to separate ourselves so hard from yeah. Like you said, D&D &D is a is an old game. Yeah. I love D&D. &D. I will always love D&D. &D. It's wizards that can fuck right off. Yeah, we're not and mostly Hasbro, I think, honestly. Well, Hasbro and Wizards, yeah, fuck them all. Uh anyway, yeah, we we're not like saying I, I don't. I just want to be clear. We're not saying like you guys shouldn't play D and D or like no. D &D. like that is no, not what we're doing not. here. We are just wounded, yeah, wounded content creators. Indeed. Why don't they love us? <laughs> <laughs> um, we never really had Wizards' attention anyway, so we're not too worried about it. But maybe we have their attention now. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I'm going to say this for a few episodes, but if you have a D and D Beyond subscription, uh, we recommend canceling that shit. <laughs> Yeah, if if you have a D and D Beyond subscription and you stand with the with, uh, third party creators against what Watsy's doing with the OGL, then one of the best things that you can do is to cancel your subscription. Um, the sends a clear message to them. Yeah, the mass subs unsubbing that that has happened this week has already caused uh, Hasbro and Watsy to rethink what they're doing. Right. So uh, all I, all I can say is, if you are on our side, if you guys agree with what we're saying, then. 
and you haven't done it yet, go go for it because it's still going to have an effect. Yeah, or you went to do it and you couldn't because the site crashed or they hid the unsubscribe button. That is something I'm upset about and would like to remind people if you were angry enough to go there in the first place and couldn't, don't forget to go back and do it because uh, that was a tactic to stop calls to action to do it from being actualized. So I would like to uh, just continue to be a thorn in the side of the plans of those in charge of the OGL. Uh, but you know, if you're, if you don't care and you're about it, like that's not going to affect how we feel about you as our audience. You know, if that, that's something you're going to continue to do, that's, that's your business. Um, and that's fine. Uh, we do want to say a big thank you to people that support the show directly on patreon.com slash the dungeon cast. So we want to, uh, say a thank you to Nathan Malone. Thank you, Nathan. Woo. Woo. Oh Ian. God. <laughs> <laughs> Voice crack, Nathan. Sorry. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Uh, and, oh, and by the way, um, I don't know if I, I'm exhausted. I don't know if this epi- this list is up to date or if we already shouted these. I think these I think Mr. Out. Malone got a got a second shout out. Right That's now. okay. If you're getting a second shout out, good for you. Hey, I, we we love you, uh, Ian Heckman. Thank you, Ian. Thanks, Ian. Eraser zero one zero five. Yes, we definitely did this already. <laughs> Thank you, subscriber. Eraser. Yeah, David annual Palumbo. subscriber. Annual subscriber, David Palumbo. Also. <laughs> Thank you, David. And Jackal your subscriber. Eight, <laughs> Jackal 829. Thank you, Jackal 829. Woo! Woo! I think Woo is my favorite one. I like them all. Yeah, they're good. Sam. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Sam. Annual subscriber, Sam. <laughs> call me Chief. <laughs> thank you, Call Me Chief. Thanks, Call Me Chief. Annual, Annual subscriber. subscriber, Call Me Chief. <laughs> Ned McDermott. Thank you, Ned. Yeah, we totally did this one. Oh, yeah. Ned is our first uh, Omega patron, which... Yep. Uh, Which was a, he got his own fanfare last time. Yeah, uh, Ari the Fox Kit. Thank you, Ari the Fox Kit. We converted did you last time to annual subscriber. Annual subscriber. And William McCracken. Thank you, William. Woo, woo. Yeah. So sorry if we did the list again. We're gonna get that up today. Yeah, that's the old list because there's been new people who've come in. It's my fault. I'm supposed to. <laughs> Monica puts this list together for us, and she asked me to move these over to a different sheet when we do them, and I just fucking neglect to do that. <laughs> Uh, and I am a piece of trash like that. So. <laughs> we are worms. I am worms, and 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 I'm sorry, Mariko. We'll f- we'll get everyone on the next one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah. On the Patreon picked episode, Brian. Damn. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry. You'll get a special, extra special one next time because these guys got this group got a, a double the double fanfare. Shout out. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, they're I'm all still it. around, and I appreciate them, so I don't mind shutting them out. No, that's but yeah, the that's new fine. new people I owe you. So so sorry, um, and especially to the annual people who want to hear Voldemort played as a trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's call it a game. Okay, bye. We'll talk to you guys later. The Dungeon Cast.